Well, you only got three chords? Ah, we'll make them sound like a million bucks. Chain, chain, chain! Chain, chain, chain! In recognition of all you've done, the people of the world hereby crown you Queen of Soul! Hola, David. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm very excited to talk to you because I've been a fan of you from always. Uh, you have been in some of the most amazing projects, including now Aretha Genius. Mm -hmm. And I've been watching the show and it's amazing. And I have to say that, I mean, Jerry, Jerry Wexner was a genius himself. He produced some of the uh, biggest bands and groups and musicians in, in life. Yeah, I've, I've, I've said as much as I've been doing, you know, the, the press for this after, you know, shooting, you know, uh, for months and months and months and getting to know about him. I knew very little about him. I knew his name. I knew his um, kind of, uh, he was revered, but I didn't know exactly all the stuff that he was responsible for. And um, yeah, I've come to think the same thing. He's this, that guy was, you know, he, he's the one who coined the term rhythm and blues. That was very much, yeah. And, um, and you know, from pre-Aretha to post-Aretha, his work, uh, well, really, really impressive. Yeah, I mean, Ray Charles, Led Zeppelin, Bob Dylan, Aretha, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Dire Straits and yeah, all kinds of folks, yeah. I, I saw some pictures before watching the show, and you guys look exactly the same. It's a great. <laughs> oh, I think that's a, a mostly why I was cast. I... It is, it's great. It, it's great casting. Uh, and when you put on the outfit and you go back and you are in the sound booth and you guys are recording, did you were you transported transported to those times? Uh, yeah. Well, the uh, you know you pointed out the uh, costume wardrobe. Uh, hair was uh, th those departments did a really really amazing job superlative uh, um, the costumes are really impressive and, and yeah you know when you have well, all that stuff on and then you get the the, uh, the beard stuff because I, I had shaved down you know uh, this is a COVID beard uh, so you know the beard and then the hair pieces and all that yeah you really feel you know it, it it's quite helpful to get into character, you know. There will never be another one like me. And I'm watching the show, I'm on episode five, mm -hmm. and things are getting hidden, hidden between you, I mean, between uh, Wexler and Aretha. But I'm watching the, the, at the first episodes, I'm like, please don't be a bad guy, please don't be a bad guy. <laughs> Because no. you know, uh, music executives usually are bad guys in in film. Yeah. And well, I mean, a lot of them are, uh, you know, for the reputation they they got, especially in that era. And you know, I think the way that women uh, were treated, let alone African American women, uh, you know, were just as secondary. Uh, people and and they were exploited um i mean the artists artists are uh, uh have always been exploited throughout time they still are today um they have a little bit more agency now but uh so what aretha did was was extra exceptional and you know per perhaps there's an argument to make that couldn't have been done without jerry wexler on her side as the liaison um and as you'll see, as the the, the um, series continues, there's a, a, a deepening bond between Jerry and Aretha, and um, he becomes kind of like a, a a good friend and a father figure and a confidant, and uh, had her back, you know. And um, and there's some really nice moments later on, like in episode seven, when you know you get back, you get closer into uh, uh, the later years and, and, you know, they stopped working together just because he left Atlantic and she signed, you know, went with somebody else because he, he sort of didn't want to be there anymore. But they remained friends. And there's a really, a really nice, sweet scene uh, where he visits her later on. 
I can't, there's no, nothing to spoil, but, um, you know, it's just that it's a, it kind of encapsulates what their relationship became over the decades, you know. And let's talk a little bit about Cynthia, because, uh, I mean, she is a great singer. How was it to hear her sing for the first time? It was amazing. I mean, everybody, uh, I mean, I can't speak for every person, but I would imagine we all kind of had the same response, which is, um, what was the first song? It was, uh, it was, it was from the first episode. It was the first thing she sings in the studio, which is early on. Um, and I'm spacing on the exact song because over the months there were numerous uh, uh, songs sung, but um, I think it was our first day of shooting and she was singing and it was just, you know, it's it's not hyperbolic to say it was, I mean, everybody was just, wow, that was amazing. You know, applauded, you know, not, not in character, just as human beings going, holy shit, that was amazing. She's, she's bringing it. Make sure the world only sees the Aretha Franklin you want them to. You got me where you want. You're gonna remember her name, Aretha. And uh, on the show, you, uh, Aretha, many of them, many people tell her, no, you only have to do soul. You only have to do this. You only have to do that. And I was wondering if in your career, somebody has, a, so have you gone through the experience of, you just have to be a comedian, don't try anything else. And how did you navigate that? And well, you know, uh, it's interesting because, I mean, I had only done really a small number of uh, more dramatic parts, um, not because I chose that, just because I, I wasn't really thought of in that way. And um, I think it was, you know, I think it was not... Uh, I think there was a bit of a struggle to cast me in this show. Um, uh, not a huge one, but I think they had to be convinced that I could do it. Um, so it's interesting that you bring that up. But um, so no one said to me, you know, you just need to do this, but it hasn't been, you know, easy, I would say. These, these kind of um, more human dramatic parts uh, are, you know, they're, they're now I'm getting more of them, but um, only only very recently. But you're great at it. I mean, usually comedians have proved us wrong and they're great. Yeah, actors. I think it's a, it's a, it's a phenomenally uh, strange and lazy way to think that for some reason, you know, when people are like, hey, that comedian was really good playing a real person. Well, you know, <laughs> they're all real people. So, you know, we understand you know, pathos and depression and anger and shame and humility and, uh, you know, and loss like any other human being. So it's a very strange reaction that people have We're like, hey, Rob Williams is really good, you know, or Jim, you know, I remember as, as anyway, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, agree. Not, <laughs> I think that it's usually the other way around. Dramatic actors are usually not funny. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's definitely truer, uh, uh, absolutely. I, I did a show in um, I did a show in England in the UK, and um, it was a dramatic uh, part that also needed comic chops to it. And when we were casting, you know, we had some bigger name uh, um, actors, and I would always have them read uh, a comic scene. And uh, they just weren't, it just wasn't natural. As opposed to the comic actors who could do the comic scene, make it natural, but then also, of course, do a dramatic, you know, uh, turn. So I, I, I've found that, yeah, absolutely uh, uh, to be true, 100%. Don't let that queen thing go to your head. I'm gonna let that queen thing go wherever I wanted to. Well, I don't wanna take more of your time. So I just want to ask you, why don't you invite everybody to watch the show and tell them why they should watch it, because it's so good. Um, I would like to invite everyone to watch Genius Aretha, um, but I'm going to do it uh, in person, individually. I'm going to go door to door. So I need everybody, this is lower 48, and I go to Alaska or Hawaii. Um, I need everybody to send Giovanni 
uh, your address, what the best time of uh, a day or evening would be to uh, come by. I'll come by, I'll wear a mask, well, I've got the mask right here. I'll wear the mask, I'll kind of stand on the front on the stoop, you guys stand a good six feet back, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you individually um, why you should watch the show. There you go. Send, send, uh, send, or this way, I don't know where you are. <laughs> send your money. I'm the addresses. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. And again, I'm a super fan. And I thank you so much for talking to us and to share the show with us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Gracias. Adios.